All right. Welcome, everybody. It's really nice to be back in Austin, and I'm excited to be running the RISC-V BOF. Um, my name is Stefano. Some of you may remember me from my days working on the Octo project or in open source firmware. Uh, currently, I work at RISC-V as a director of technical programs, uh, which basically means I'm helping to ratify many specifications to extend the RISC-V ISA and really helping to forge what is an open source ISA development process that up till today has not been well defined and we are hopefully charging forward with that. So this is a BOF. Uh, it's going to be a pretty open Q&A discussion session, but I prepared some slides just so folks can kind of get some fodder for asking questions. Feel free to stop me during any of this presentation, just raise your hand and we can chat. And then when I get to the end, I'll open up the floor for a discussion. Uh, so the talk is pretty straightforward. It's just going to be uh, where have we been, where are we going, and how we're going to get there. In terms of where we've been, uh, last year was a pretty busy year for us over at RISC-V International. <laughs> we had a pretty large backlog, and so we were able to ratify 16 specs. Um, the specs that we ratify, you can think of them as a group of uh, extensions to the RISC-V base ISA. And so there were 44 total extensions that were added to the RISC-V ISA, uh, 46 working groups in total. It is a rather large community, uh, a lot, to, lot, to, uh, lot of work getting done. Uh, we have committees that oversee special interest groups and then the task groups that are actually getting the work done that are uh, ratifying specifications, generating standards, and uh, doing the work that needs to be done. Uh, this year, we've already ratified three specs and one extension. Um, I'll call out two of the specs that we ratified, Supervisor Binary Interface, uh, SBI, and uh, the UEFI protocol. These are both things related to platforms, which I'll talk a little bit more on another slide, but stuff that might be interesting to you. Uh, and then we're also still forming new groups. So we, we spin up these special interest groups so that they can be a center for discussion, and then they, those special interest groups will go off and start task groups to actually do the work. Uh, so I've told you what we did last year, what's coming next? Uh, well, I mentioned platforms. Uh, platform standardization is going to be rather important for RISC-V. Uh, we're currently uh, suffering from chip shortages and supply chain problems, so there's not a ton of hardware out there, but there's a ton of hardware that will be coming. And for those of you who work on software, we would really like to standardize those platforms so that you're not seeing a completely different beast every time you put a new board on your desk. Uh, so those efforts, uh, profiles, platforms, supervisor executionary environment, and unified discovery, uh, those are all essentially in aid of a platform that's standardized so that company A can produce a platform that looks just like company B's from the software's point of view. Uh, it's making your life easier. There's also some other standards we're working on, things like advanced interrupt, packed SIMD, things that I'm sure you'll all be interested to see. Uh, we're hoping to have most of this done by the end of the year, early 2023. As far as more work that's being done, uh, we do have uh, a lot of specifications out there that I think will be interested to the embedded folks, specifically code size. That's been brought up in a lot of our different working groups as a thing that RISC-V needs to concentrate on. So we have a group of extensions that are going to aid in code size reduction. Uh, and then also, we ratified a scalar version of cryptography extensions for uh, RISC-V last year and a vector spec. Now that the vector spec is out, we're going to start working on cryptography related to vector. So that's another thing that lots of folks are interested in seeing. Uh, how do we get there? That sounds like a lot of work that we're going to be doing. And as such, we have a pretty uh, large community internally at RISC-V. So RISC-V membership is needed for ISA development, for developing standards and extensions. Um, but it is free to join. This is how we lay out our organization. This is how we're getting that work done. Uh, you'll see some horizontal committees, the horizontal bars there. Uh, those are the places that oversee high-level work. Um, so specifically, if you're interested in software, we've got a privileged software IC and uh, application and tools HC. Those two groups essentially split up the software between the uh, privileged, which you can think of as operating system, firmware type stuff, and then application and tools, essentially everything else. Uh, so if you're interested in software and you're interested in membership, that would be a place to get involved. Uh, the rest of the groups all work on strictly uh, specification development. Uh, so you see the unpriv and priv ICs. That's where a lot of the specification development work happens. Uh, developing specifications is probably easier than you think. 
If you've never done it and you're interested, it actually at RISC-V looks a lot like software development. We store all of our specifications in a format called ASCII doc, which is a type of markdown on GitHub. If you're interested in contributing, you send a pull request. If you find a bug, you send an issue. It's pretty much like software development, but in the standards world. So if you are interested, I highly recommend looking at membership. As I said, it's free, and you can contribute to specification development. That being said, I'm pretty sure I'm at the Embedded Linux conference, so I figured I should probably mention some software that most of you will be interested in. Uh, this is the eye chart that I show when I give presentations at lots of conferences. Uh, the thing that I'm trying to get across here isn't so much that your vision is going, but rather that we work with a ton of communities at RISC-V. There's lots of different software communities we're working with. Uh, we're trying to build open source from the ground up. So we're starting at the ISA level. Uh, we have a golden model written in a language that came out of Cambridge called SAIL. We have architectural tests that we're standardizing around, and the stack builds from there, and it's open source all the way up. So it really is an effort where if you're used to working in open source, we're trying to make this as painless as possible. And as a result, our members and community members uh, have developed several stacks that they're currently booting on products. This is software that's out there in the field today that our, our members, RISC-V members, and community members are using. That is not to say that these stacks are complete and flawless and don't need any work on them whatsoever. If any of this is interesting to you, please do join our community and help us move this forward. There's work that needs to be done in lots of these areas. Um, speaking of our community and work that needs to be done, this is how you join the community. Um, I mentioned that you do need to be a member if you're interested in working on ISA specifications. You do not need to be a member to contribute to RISC-V. Uh, you can get involved by heading over to the wiki to get started. You can head over to GitHub where we store not just our specifications, but all the software that we're working on, all the firmware that we're working on is all up on GitHub. And while we have member mailing lists for that you know, uh, specification development discussion, uh, we have public mailing lists for things like software development, SWDev, and hardware development, HWDev. So these are places where even before you're a member, you could already get involved and join the conversation. And uh, ISADev, where we uh, talk publicly about the specifications. Before a specification is ratified by the board and by the TSC, the Technical Steering Committee, we give it a 45-day public review period on that list, ISADEV. So a public mailing list where before we put the stamp on it and say, okay, we're gonna ratify this, anyone from the public can comment. Now that being said, if you're really interested in spec development, you'd wanna get involved much, much earlier on and membership is free. But this is a chance where you can see what's going on in RISC-V before the ratifications actually happen. So those are all the slides I had today. I'll leave this up uh, for you to uh, take snapshots of. I'll open the floor up to discussion and questions. If you have a question that no one can answer, including myself, I have my card. I will give it to you and I will find someone who can answer the question you have. So I'll open up the floor. I have more slides with roadmap stuff on it if you're bored and want to look at roadmap slides. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go first. Good, that scares one. someone into asking yeah, a right. question. <laughs> Once you break the ice, everybody will flood out and that's have right. a question. So, um, so we are uh, a, a kind of real device widget company who's in the process of working with uh, another third party to develop a chip. Um, but we're kind of down in the RV32 space, um, deeply embedded bare metal. And I feel like a lot of the RISC-V environment is, is targeted more at RV64 and Linux and like that whole stack of stuff you showed there. Right. None of it's going to apply to my process. Right, right. So I guess I'd, I'd like to kind of hear uh, one, like how can I help in terms of making sure that RV32 and low level is, is where it needs to be. Right. Um, and, and two, kind of speak to what's going on in that space. Sure. Um, and yeah. I guess one more, the, the click in particular is one that we're ah. quite interested in. So, Excellent. Yeah. So um, I'll start with the click because that's easiest, <laughs> oddly. Um, so for those who don't know, the click is the core local interrupt controller. Uh, so essentially, the I would say if you're looking at interrupts, it's the furthest one down the stack. So the interrupts get more complicated from there. Um, if you're interested in what's going on with the click, uh, again, membership is free uh, for individuals. And there is a group that meets to discuss interrupts. 
Uh, there's sort of the Hyler level group that meets. That's just looking at the big picture, but there is a group that's discussing work on the click. So that is a way to get involved there. Uh, in terms of uh, essentially what's going on bare metal, uh, two things I'd say. First would be uh, the real-time stuff that's going on. So Zephyr, FreeRTOS, RT Thread. Not sure if that's applicable to you at all, but okay. So I've been working with the Zephyr community and the FreeRTOS community, and now just recently RT Thread. I'm trying really hard to get a group of uh, people interested in RTOSs together to form a SIG. Uh, one of the problems I'm having is leadership. Uh, people are very interested to come to that SIG meeting, but I would like to not lead it. <laughs> not being a real-time expert. So if you know anyone who might be interested in doing that, it's not a ton of work to run a SIG. It's essentially one meeting every few weeks and paying attention to a mailing list so that questions essentially get bubbled up to somebody. Um, so that's kind of where the next step is going there. Uh, in terms of bare metal, um, I assume our soft CPUs are interesting to you at all? No. Okay. So yeah, so the other group that I'm interested in forming, so there's a big soft CPU group that works with FPGA stuff as sort of a side note to seed more questions. Um, but in terms of bare metal work uh, that's not soft CPU, I am interested in forming a group that focuses on hardware implementations. Uh, it's a little delicate to do in an open source community because especially at RISC-V, we try to stay away from implementation. But I'd like to enable folks at all levels to build products. And so a big part of that is folks getting together to ask questions about, hey, how did you do this? I see you got this product out the door and we're struggling with this. How did you do that? And that's an open forum which I can create and foster. So I'm definitely interested in doing that. I've had folks in the mobile and laptop space talk to me about that, but now I've just had someone from the, real, from the bare metal space talk to me on that. So uh, my card's up here. Let's connect afterwards, and we'll see if we can tie you into that group as it gets going. There's one virtual question. Oh, all right. What is the status of profiles? What a great question. I feel like that one was seated. <laughs> so let me give a quick rundown of profiles and platforms for folks. So uh, the way RISC-V is structured, uh, the ISA, you have a base ISA. The base ISA is uh, RV32I, RV64I, or RV32E. These, this is essentially the core of what RISC-V needs to, to process, to be a CPU. Everything else is layered on top. So if you want to do multiplication, it's an extension. It's layered on top, M. Uh, if you want to do compressed instructions, that's layered on top. The only differences in the base, really, are the 32-bit, uh, 64-bit, 128-bit, and then I or E. E for uh, essentially embedded, where they're cutting down the registers from 32 to 16 to save space where that's applicable. Um, everything else is layered on top. A profile is gonna define, in a standard way, what can you expect to be in your RISC-V implementation. So if I'm gonna ship a RISC-V implementation that boots Linux, I'm gonna want the letter G after, after RV64I. Uh, that denoting those extensions that Linux expects to be there. I'm not gonna rattle them off because I don't think they're all in my head and I'll miss one and someone will call me on it. Uh, so that's what profiles entails. Now, why are we doing that? What's the point to standardizing that concept? Well, we want implementers to be able to go off and implement something that the software community, when they go to build platforms with it, will know, oh, I have an RV64IG implementation. I know what's there. I know I can count on multiply, divide, float, double. All this stuff is there. So I know I can boot Linux. But we want to kind of take it the next step further to start to push the envelope. We want to seed the community with the opportunity to do more work in more interesting areas. So by creating a profile that's more complex, those profiles will then encourage implementers to create a conforming profile that adheres to that standard and has those advanced features in it. And so we're sort of forcing folks to push the envelope and build more interesting products. Now, what's the state of that was the original question, I believe. Um, it's the technical steering committee's job to decide on what goes into a profile and what goes into a platform. Because at the end of the day, we're not building platforms. We're not creating implementations. But we'd like to create a good interface for the community to use. So we will discuss that end of platforms. From a profile standpoint, it really is just discussion among the technical steering committee about what they think the community wants to see. 
current state of it is they know people would like to see Linux booting on RISC-V. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure you're going to see a profile coming pretty soon that adheres to that idea. Um, I can't give you a date on that because we're currently working on that with the TSC. However, it does raise the idea that if the community is interested in seeing different kinds of profiles, there are mailing lists on that screen in front of you where you could discuss that. And that discussion will filter up because of yours truly to the TSC. And that discussion will happen on we're hearing this from the community. This is the kind of profile we're going to create. And if you think about how we've developed ISAs and specifically platforms in the past, this is an interesting idea because it's not the customer, not the person buying the chip that's telling us how we're going to do our job. It's the people who are helping to work on the infrastructure. So that's, that's the way things are turning with RISC-V, and I think it's an interesting opportunity for folks. Hopefully that answered the question. <laughs> Any other questions? More on Another that. virtual All one. All right, virtual. What is the reasonable limitation on number of RISC-V cores on the chip? That's also a good question. Um, are there any PhDs in the room? <laughs> I didn't see any hands go up. Um, I can tell you what I've seen. I've seen thousands of cores. Uh, so a thousand cores on a machine came out of Esperanto. Uh, my knowledge of multi-core does not span deep enough to tell you what is the practical limit. Uh, however, um, my contact information, unfortunately, is on a card that you can't see. Uh, if you type my name into Google, <laughs> I have a unique first and last name. And you will find me, and I can find an answer to that question. Uh, most likely coming out of an academic institution, but I can help you with that. <laughs> Unless, did anyone here want to answer that question? It is a buff. Discussion around the limits of core implementation? No. Okay. Other questions or thoughts, discussion topics? No, no, I'm just rambling. So, uh, are there any soft CPUs that have actually taped out? Uh, yes, Should there are several. Who's uh, also, hello, him? great to see you. I know, I was going to say, do you miss the <laughs> OSPDT? Um, yes, there are soft CPUs that. So, um, Jeffro did write an article on that. So, I mean, it's dubious, but because it came from Jeffro, I'd like to go on record saying that. Um, no. Um, in terms of stuff that's been taped out, I would go look at the work that Berkeley did uh, because that's, that'll sort of get you in, in, off on the right foot because that's, I think, where the inception of RISC-V came from was a bunch of folks at Berkeley mm -hmm. uh, creating soft CPUs for an educational purpose and then being like, hey, why don't we tape these out? And then looking at the results. And then by 2015, it was, you know, actual uh, implementations folks were looking to put out into products. So uh, yeah, I think their Boom Core, B-O-O-M, is the is one that they've taped out that runs Linux. But from there, uh, you can go out from there. You can also look at, um, oh, what's the one? Open Titan uses Ibex. Ibex is a much simpler 32-bit core that uh, is used in uh, Open Titan, which is, I believe, a trusted platform module that came out of Google that is open source. Thank I you. believe that's been taped out. I believe that's been put in products. So if, could I go buy a dev kit or something and start? With OpenTitan, yes. I believe there are dev kits out there. And if I am a liar, <laughs> uh, then let me know. And I will find from somebody at Google how I can play around with OpenTitan in an actual chip. Because I know it's been implemented on products. So I have to imagine there's a dev board out there somewhere. Somewhere. One would hope. Thank you. Other questions? Also an opportunity to throw tomatoes at me. It's not often you get this chance at a buff. <laughs> Do you have tomatoes? Do I? <laughs> I did not, however, bring fruit. <laughs> I was just going to ask if you can expand on the advanced interrupts that you had listed up there. Where, is, where do you see uh, that going? Yes, yeah, so advanced interrupts, AIA. So that is a pretty new effort in terms of, uh, so you've got, in terms of interrupts, you've got the click, uh, core local interrupt controller, uh, the platform local interrupt controller, click, and AIA, uh, advanced interrupt architecture, uh, is a group that's essentially taking the next step, adding more complexity and more features to interrupts. 
can't tell you much about it, but I can give you my card. And there's a mailing list where they're discussing it. Uh, if you want to be a member, and if not, I can just connect you with folks who will be happy to discuss it with you. If no one in the room is asking questions, the folks virtually are. Sounds good. <laughs> Next one is, how really promising to use RISC-V cores to offload computation into star age device space? Any awesome. roadmaps for this? Sure, yeah. Uh, so I think what the question is, it's, it's moving compute off the CPU and into other areas. Storage is one I haven't thought a lot about. But in-memory compute is probably uh, what I would recommend that person look into. Uh, in-memory compute is becoming much more popular. It's getting the compute closer to the memory. It's being used in AI and ML. And uh, I would recommend that person look at Esperanto in terms of companies that are doing cutting edge type things with RISC-V cores. I don't know if they're doing in-memory compute, but the folks at Esperanto are the folks I would ask about who is doing in-memory compute. <laughs> This isn't a question, but someone commented, VESC Risk v is an excellent soft core. Check out Linux on Litex. Linux on I, don't, Litex. I could totally be pronouncing this wrong, sorry. How's it spelled? Like Linux-on-litex. OK. No. Yeah. Um, another question. Sure. Any updates on TEE and something similar to TF-A for RISC-V? Oh, yep, trusted firmware. Uh, yeah, so for those uh, not in the know, trusted execution environments, TEE, uh, many of you will have heard of Intel SGX and ARM Trust Zone, uh, and then TFA, trusted firmware, uh, I believe the A stands for application. It's been a while. Um, but yes, there has been a lot of progress. Uh, so PMP is RISC-V's trusted execution environment setup. Um, the base layer, PMP, physical memory protection, uh, is essentially the core of what will allow us to have some trusted application environment to work in. Um, we recently extended that with ePMP, extended PMP or enhanced PMP, uh, into the next layer. So PMP is sitting at the machine layer, uh, the M layer of RISC-V. You have uh, machine, uh, supervisor, hypervisor, and user. Uh, so sort of think of the same privilege levels that you have in other architectures. Uh, so we have PMP at the machine level. Uh, we've recently brought it up into supervisor level. And we're working on things like IO PMP. And my, the real interesting work that's going on, not to sort of get out of the hardware and into the community, but uh, the real interesting work that's going on right now is in the security uh, horizontal committee. Because what they're discussing is the entire software model, or sorry, security model. So trusted execution is just one part of the security model. But if you go look up ARM Trust Zone, you'll see that there's a whole you know, ecosystem of security uh, enablement that happens in that arena. So while we've enabled sort of that core level that you need to get that work done, we still have a lot of work to do to create an entire stack or an entire solution that you might use. There are a lot of folks out there that have already implemented PMP in trusted, uh, sorry, tongue twister in trusted execution environment applications. However, they've done that sort of on their own. We're bringing that in and getting as much of that stuff open source as we can. So as much of the stack that can be open source, we will open source and show, you know, here's how one might do that implementation. Uh, in terms of open source implementations that are out there today, I would take a look at Keystone. That is um, one, one current solution that's out there and will, I'm sure, take advantage of any of the new features that we come out with. The virtual community is very strong in here. Okay. This will be a test, because someone <laughs> dropped an answer in this, so we'll see if you give the right answer. Oh, wow. Just All kidding. Right. Um, <laughs> any news on cheap community-oriented RISC-V Linux-capable boards? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> no, that's a good question. So I think I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, we are suffering from a chip shortage and supply chain problem, especially in RISC-V. Um, that being said, there are some boards out there. Uh, the D1 board is one I take a look at. Uh, the D1 chip, oh, I'm not going to be able to remember the name of the company that made it, though. Um, the D1 chip came out of Alibaba. I can't remember the actual manufacturer of the chip. Oh, Pardon? Oh, winner. thank you. See, Thomas is here to correct me. Um, so 
Uh, there are a couple of boards that implement that. That is about as cheap as it gets right now. Uh, there is also a Vision 5 board from Star 5, a little bit more expensive, gets more into the $200 range. The D1 is closer to 100. However, more important than any of that, we have a developer board program. So if you go to our website and you head over to the development board program that's linked somewhere right there on the front, uh, you can sign up to receive a free development board. It'll either be a D1 or a Vision 5 right now. As new boards come out, we will be shipping boards out to the community. The idea is we'd like to seed the community with the ability to do work based on projects. So you fill out what kind of project you're interested in working on. You promise to us that you'll follow up <laughs> and actually tell us how that project goes. It doesn't have to succeed. You just have to tell us you'll follow up and we'll ship you a board. So uh, there, are, there are inexpensive boards out there, but there's also a program that'll help you get it in your hands for free. So shameless plug for our dev board program. Very excited about that one. That was one of the options that someone provided, so nice. you passed the test. I think the only other one someone wrote, Sippy Leachy RV, and it said under $30. I don't know. Oh, okay. I could yeah, that's true. I, I sort of went right to Linux, but there are a lot of uh, boards out there that, are, uh, that won't run Linux, but that are uh, RISC-V based. Uh, SparkFun has probably the most popular one. They're red five boards. Are we good? All right, any other questions in the room? You missed the chance to throw tomatoes at me. I'm really glad nobody brought produce. <laughs> all right, well, it is beer 30, so thank you all very much for coming. Appreciate you showing up, and see you all at the next conference. Thank you very much. Thank you.